This video is about how to navigate your HL7 SQL Schema database. It works with either the UltraPort HL7 SQL Schema engine for HL7 or our HL7 Plus SQL Schema engine. This assumes that you've already watched the first video how to create a HL7 database in less than 15 minutes. Today we're going to talk about navigating this database once you have created it. So before you begin, you have to create a SQL schema and import some messages. I've already done this. I have created a SQL schema. The prefix is triple A, and I'm going to import some messages like so. Export these to a folder. Export. Yes. All right. This is our uh, HL7 Notepad product. We have another video how to use your notepad to create unlimited test data. I've created 512 messages and we're going to wait for those to go into the database. They're being loaded right now. Okay, through the magic of the pause button, we've imported our messages. Stop this and close it. And we're going to now go look at our document. We've done this. Now, what tables are created and what is the naming convention? Whenever, whenever people start using the scheme engine, they automatically want to run over to SQL Server and take a look at, at what happened. Well, here it is. Here's all of the tables that we created. Since our prefix was AAA, all of the objects start with AAA. And we create all these tables. And a lot of people will look at this and go, oh my goodness, it's created a million tables. I'll never make my way through all of this. But the simple fact is, if you work with HL7, you might go your entire career and only work with a dozen of these tables. A lot of them will have things that you don't ever use. But we think that it's better to load it all and have it and not need it than it is to need it and not have it. So your main table is AAA HL7 data. That's if your prefix is AAA. And then the segment tables start with the prefix AAA and then the word segment, followed by an underscore and then the three character name and then an A and or a B. If there's a B table, what that means is the HL7 segment in the definition contained more than 40 fields. So the first 40 fields are put in the A table and the remainder of the fields starting at field 41 are put in the B table. There's an explanation for why this is in the online help, but let's move on. Now when you're working with your schema, there are two table names that you need to know specifically. One is your HL7 data table. Again, the prefix underscore HL7 data. This is the table that will have one row for every HL7 message. The other table that you need to worry about is the message manifest table. And this is one that you might use if you're consuming messages, but that you will definitely use if you're creating messages. This video is only about consuming messages, so we're not going to talk about the message manifest table that much. And then beyond that, you just have to know how to identify the table name for a particular segment. So if you need to get data out of the PID segment for patient information, and you know the prefix, you can derive the table name in your head. It's prefix underscore segment underscore the name of the segment. In our case, we want to look at the PID segment and then underscore A for fields 1 through 40. If there's more than 40 fields, you want underscore B. The table layouts are exactly the same. Which brings us back to our document. We finished task one, what tables are created, and we're coming to our frequently asked question. This is the most common question we get. Is there a data dictionary for your HL7 schema? And the answer is 
Yes, there is not only a data dictionary, there are multiple data dictionaries. The data dictionary is HL7. Plain and simple. There's documents you can download from hl7.org. You also create your own HL7 definitions. But that becomes the data dictionary for the schema. We'll explain why next. So moving on to task two, using the schema browser to help visualize your schema. The product ships with a tool called the schema browser. You get it from the tools menu, you open it up, it lists all of the schemas that you have created, and you click the browse button to open up the query builder and results. From here, you just pick your parameters and you can do show SQL or execute. And if I do this, there I've got 522 HL7 messages in my database right now. If I want, I can choose any one of these and click on the report button and it will pull up a report. And this is what we mean when we say use the schema browser to visualize your schema. Let's look at a report on this. It will show you, I'm going to try to make this a little bit bigger. If you make it bigger, the font will get larger. When you pull up the report, it will show you the raw HL7 message. And then you can also see the segments that are included in the message. And you can expand them out and see either the full segment definition. A lot of HL7 is blank. So you can see the data is actually in blue. But you can tell that I want to collapse all those empty fields and show me just the fields with data in it. That will change a 30-page report into a one-page report. You can see the raw value of the HL7 segment. You can see the message ID. This is a unique ID that we create. So what we're going to do is to visualize this, I'm going to copy this to the clipboard with a control C and let's go over to SQL Server and start to plug it in. So there's my message ID. Here's my HL7 data row. Here's my PID segment. I've got some fields selected out of that. The patient's name, PID, field 5, component, etc. And there's my patient name, last name, first name, middle initial. The rest of these fields are null because there was no data. Now you can go the reverse if you want to go from the database to the schema browser. You can start with a message ID. Close this. Go to design a query. Go down to miscellaneous filters and you can put in a message ID right there and it will execute and show just this one message. Now, from here, let's talk about how we identify a message. Looking at our tasks so far, we've used the schema browser to visualize our data. And now the big one. How do you create a SQL statement to retrieve any piece of data you want from the schema? <clears throat> if you've been following along, you probably know where we're going to go with this. If you know, let's write it. If you know the prefix of the schema and you know the location of the piece of data that you're looking for, you can write the schema, the SQL in your head. So, what does that mean? Let's look at patient information, specifically the patient's name. I know that the patient's name is in field number five. 
of the PID segment. And I know that field number five of the PID segment is a data type XPN. What we're looking at here is the definition from good old version 2.3.1 of HL7. That's the version that's still in use in 80% of the world. So in 2.3.1, an XPN data type had seven components. The family name, last name, given name, first name, middle initial, suffix, prefix, degree, and the name type code, whatever that means. That means that in the database, you will have seven components. And the field name, PID, F5, field 5, C1, component 1, component 2, component 3, on out to the final. In later versions, this expanded out to 15 components, but still, it works the exact same way. So back in my other document, following that along, since I know that my prefix is AAA, and I know that the piece of data that I want is the patient's last name and first name, my SQL statement is select PID underscore F5 underscore C1 and PID underscore F5 underscore C2 from table name is going to be AAA underscore segment underscore PID underscore A. Now this will give me every patient last name and first name in my schema. Let's run it. And there they are. All I need is a WHERE statement to narrow it down to the specific one and it's WHERE message ID equals whatever the unique message ID is. And BAM! There's my data. That's how easy it is. You can navigate the entire schema this way for multiple uh, occurring segments, like, for instance, the insurance segments. That's the IN1, IN2, IN3. If you need to retrieve multiple rows, that is very easily done. Select star from seg AAA underscore segment underscore IN1 underscore A. Now I need the WHERE statement and finally an order by IDX. That's the ordinal position that that segment appeared in the database. As it is, I only have one insurance segment. If, there, if this returned more than one row, that would indicate that row one was the primary insurance, row two would be secondary insurance, row three would be tertiary, etc. Same thing works with diagnoses. If you're getting from the diagnosis tables or prescriptions or anything that, that, that might have multiple rows, guarantors, lab results, etc. It's just select from the segment table where the message ID is the unique message, order by IDX, and you get them in the proper order. And that is it. That's how you navigate your SQL Schema Engine. Easy to do. You can write it in your head. Follow our next videos for things like database maintenance or tips and tricks, and subscribe to our channel. Look for the first video if you haven't watched on how to create your SQL Schema database in less than 15 minutes.